What is up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. It's been a long time. And today I have a very special guest that needs almost no introduction because she's probably the biggest name in poker right now. Jamie Kerstetter, ladies and gentlemen. And also with me, I have a new producer for my show, Brent Harrington. You might remember him from, you know, Stones Live. Him and I work together. So thanks, Brent. Uh, Jamie, what is up? Um... I think Helmuth and Negranu and like Matt Asau and Doyle Brunson might have a thing or two to say about me being Who? Who? <laughs> Who? You know, just some schmucks. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, I wanted to have you on. You've had me on like three times because, you know, kind of a big deal. But but now I have you on because there's some big news in your life. I mean, you've always been a really big name in poker and on poker Twitter. You are the funniest person on poker Twitter. But now... World Series of Poker has um, taken you to the next level. CBS Sports has taken on the World Series of Poker. Um, I think it's more than just the main event coverage, but now you've been signed on as a third person with Norman Chad and Lon McCarron, right? Yeah, uh, I'm super excited. It's like a really weird threesome, you know, not the one that I had envisioned in my dreams, but, uh, you know, I'll take it. Um, they're At awesome. our age, we got to take what we can get, yes, right? Can All right, sure, I'm down. No, they're... Uh, all joking aside, they're like two dads. They're fucking awesome. Um, they just, yeah, they've always had my back. They're really cool. I get along with them really well. I genuinely really like them. I hope that comes across like when we're doing commentary. I like Norm's, Norm's dad jokes and sense of humor. Like they hit the spot for me. I don't know what that says about my own sense of humor, but I love him. And then just Lon, Lon's great. And yeah, especially whenever there's been some controversy or whatever, they just like always had my back and I, I really appreciate them. No, it's really good in a threesome to have someone hit your spot. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, so tell me, how did this come about? Why, why did CBS Sports and the World Series of Poker decide to, you know, um, take you? Because you were, you've been working with World Series of Poker since 2018, doing t commentary. So, what, what changed? Um, yeah, I really didn't think I was going to get this job. To be honest, if I had. I would have lost a lot of money betting against me getting this job um, because I thought from going from ESPN to CBS that if they were ever trying to like shake things up, um, that that would be the time to do it. It's like a pretty natural time to be like, OK, Lon and Norm have been the voice for a while. Let's get some new school players in, stuff like that. So I was kind of like sweating that because for me, uh, even more so than my own job, I just... I love them and I've been listening to them since I started playing poker. It's like what got me into it. Um, and thinking about them being replaced is really depressing. So when I found out they were still getting that job, I was like, oh, that's great. I still didn't think I was. I had, I don't know, like I, I had done it once. Um, it was sort of a last minute thing. They told me like two days or three days before, hey, yeah, we want you to do like day one or whatever. I'd done day one and day two, like the day the year before. Um, I wasn't counting on getting the job. So, so that year I just assumed, oh, maybe they've asked some like super famous people and those people are like, I'm on vacation or I lost 500K this summer and I don't want to do it. Um, so I just didn't really think it was like my job. I was like, oh, it was a cool thing I got to do for one summer. I'm very happy to have done it. It was terrifying and exciting and whatever. Um, so I just wasn't counting on it. And I was so happy. <laughs> like I've done a zillion streams for WPT, Poker Go, all these, but this one just it's just big, you know, WSOP just feels bigger. It feels more exciting. The players are, they're changing their lives. And it's like cool to be a little tiny part of that and getting to commentate on these people making like million dollar decisions every five minutes. It's, I don't know. I'm just happy. I'm surprised and happy and it hasn't worn off yet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the biggest thing in poker. It's, it's our main event. So it is, it is a big deal. I mean, it's not as big as poker after dark, but you know, like you're, you're trying. <laughs> Um, and, and of course, like we're, they're not using you just yes, for exactly. your looks, right? Um, they, you're, you're there giving an analytical I hope breakdown not. that they're just not used to <laughs> I am, uh, I'm barely on camera at all. Uh, I'm also old and withered. If they're trying to look for someone for their looks, like, I mean, they're slightly misguided. I don't know if the person hiring is just, they put their contact lenses out or something, but no, uh, it's actually one of the things about the job I like the most is that doesn't matter what I look like. It matters what I sound like, what I'm saying, like if, if they like my sense of humor, if they like the analysis and that's refreshing because it's like, there's not a lot of jobs in TV that you can get that it just doesn't really matter what you look like. Like I'm wearing sweatpants in the booth. I don't care. Okay. 
so let's okay let's let's simmer that down a little bit okay because you are hired doug poke <laughs> hires you to write for him let's not <laughs> let's not dismiss this stuff you're a lawyer you've you know you're a brilliant person and you're a thirst trap so like you know, you're getting you're getting your Instagram spammed. I just spammed your Instagram. I don't know if you noticed. I love you. After I saw your tweet. So you're getting your Instagram spammed and um and you're brilliant and like of mm -hmm. course they're hiring you and you're gorgeous. Stop. I'm just gonna say you're the only one who knows about the thirst traps. I send my thirst traps directly to Veronica, um, because I'm a little shy, but she gets them directly to her. So, so I, that's where people I think we're joking. Yeah. <laughs> And, and I will say that the thirst trap exchange is mutual, right? We, yep. we both send each other thirst traps and, and the thirstiest of the thirst traps. <laughs> and people yeah. think we're joking. Like if you, you guys wish you got what we send each other. <laughs> Well, you can if you just go to my OnlyFans, which is all Veronica's thirst traps. Like, <laughs> Ninety-nine a month. <laughs> what if you've I was? Made, you've made twenty cents this year. You know, it's like great. what a yeah. profit! <laughs> After taxes, you can almost get yeah. yourself a slushy. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, so what's up with Run at Once? I want to know. Are you still doing uh, some stuff with Run at Once, or how is this going to affect so it? I'm just like I'm the laziest podcaster. I give so much credit to the people who can like stay on a schedule and just literally like like oh I pod podcast once a week and here it is and here's my new guest and I research them and I'm doing a great job. That is not me. I don't like I want to I want to do a pod when like I'm inspired to do one when someone's like did something cool or controversial or whatever. Like I just had, I had Christy uh, Marino and Andrew on and cause they were having a baby. He won a million dollars having a baby. Before they had the baby? Yeah. And, and like, and they just got a new dog. I'm like, Oh, all the things I want to hear about. Like, I don't want to hear about hand histories. I want to hear about all their life stuff and like how they're navigating it. Cause it's super interesting to me. So I was very happy to, to do that pod. And then I haven't done one since it's been like, mm, like a month or something. Um, so yeah, I am doing stuff for them. I'm sure run it once and Phil Goffon are not exactly the happiest with me because I just kind of dropped the ball for a little while, but I don't know. Phil, if you need a blonde to fill in, you know, I'm always yeah. there for you if you need it. Plus I love <laughs> the Galfons. I'm, I'm, I just love them. They're so kind. They're so They've cool. been kind to me and, and like they're a couple goals, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, but and their kid is like the cutest kid. I'm not even like a kid person, really. I'm a, more of a puppy person. Their kid is so cute. Spencer is just cute and brilliant. It's going to be like, cutest. I don't know. Yeah. President or something. I love when she posts when he's all dressed up and he's like all dapper, you know? <laughs> so cute. Oh. So um, let's get into some nitty gritty because I want to know you and I want people to know you. Okay. <laughs> going to hate me. Oh, no. Talk okay. to me about what's going on in your life. Um mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about your life? I mean, I don't have anyone else's life to talk about. Like, what do you, what do you mean? What are you going to ask me? Well, I mean, I, uh, everyone knows you were in a long relationship. And, you know, I'm I'm divorced and I've gone through like a pretty long personal journey. Um, not like recovering from that. Well, kind of recovering from that relationship, but like dealing with, uh, you know, becoming a better person and becoming a better mm -hmm. partner to someone potentially, you know, dealing with toxic traits I had, dealing with things that I don't, that I've, I tolerated previously. Like, I'm just mm -hmm. wondering, you know, I think a lot of people go through, you know, being in a long relationship and then ending it and then what that process is after and like what mm -hmm. mental state you're in. I want to know everything. Just tell me. <laughs> just tell you. Um, you touched on a lot of stuff that I have actually been thinking about, like being single, the variance is just so much higher of like what your day can be like. And that's something where like, that was part of the reason I wanted to be single. I was like, I was really, my ex is amazing. He's a great person. I was not amazing with him. And I think that like, I had a little bit of a, I got to get out of here because I am not being amazing. I'm being like very comfortable and complacent. And for, for my own reasons, like he didn't do anything wrong. Um, and I feel like it was because there was like no variance. There was just a lot of like, every day feels a little bit the same. I don't feel like super inspired. I, I was like, I kind of like stopped working out. I kind of stopped studying. I was just like, meh. Like you wake up and be like, okay, today. And I was like, this isn't me. It doesn't feel like me. Um, and single feels really weird though. I've never done this. Like I've gone relation to relationship and it's been like five months or something. And I'm like, the variance is crazy. Like, it's just every day. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do today. I'm just going to do what I want. Like, I'll just go on a trip to San Diego for two days and like go see some friends. Like I definitely am like the bad parts are you drink a little more. Cause you're just like doing more social stuff. So I'm like hung over more and I'm just like, ugh, like, <laughs> like I'm like a get up at seven 30 in the morning person. And some days I'm just like, I feel like I hit by a bus. 
Um, on average, I think I am happier. It's just like on average is really doing a lot of work in this spot because it's like the lows have I've had some very bad days where I'm just like, what am I doing? Like I miss my dogs. I miss the like, comfort of like being someone's priority, them being your priority, making someone happy. Like those things are really big. It's like a huge part of life is like feeling like you're improving someone else's life um, and that that someone's good for you and like you care about each other so much. Not having that like one person is really weird um, and it has made me be like a more attentive friend for sure. Like I feel like I'm getting that and giving that to more people. Um, and I feel like my friendships have been like substantially better. Um, I've been more present. I've needed more communication with them. And I I used to be the person who'd be a little like flaky and ghosty, um, be like, yeah, we'll hang out. And the person's in town and I'm like, oh, I don't answer my phone. Like I just try not to do stuff like that. So when you're saying like personal, like personal improvements and stuff like that hit the spot just now. Cause I'm like, there's a lot of things where, you know, when you're comfortable, you just don't like really assess them. And I've been thinking about it a lot. And like one thing I've been doing a lot of is like, getting up and being like, what do I want to do today? Like, what do I want to accomplish today? And not just like letting life happen. I mean, like, I want to study some poker. Like, I want to get some coke. I want to read this book that I've had half read for like a year. Um, stuff that's personal that other people have no effect on at all. So it's like, oh, if some guy calls me back or not, if some date goes amazing or not, it just doesn't matter. I'm like, there's a lot of stuff I do on my own that makes me like pretty happy and makes me feel like pretty fulfilled. And I'm trying to like focus on more of that so that like the variance of other people is like a little bit lessened. Yeah, I found that um, I was single for like a couple of years and um, I really worked through a lot of loneliness and uh, a lot, I've just recently started dating one person and we'll see how it's it goes. Me. That, it's me, you guys, just like, it's been it's going Mandy. really. <laughs> I'm really in love with you, to be honest. <laughs> Um, but you know, like the whole process of being single and processing the loneliness and then, and then like working through what my talk toxic traits have been working through what kind of friend I want to be to people and, you know, having that time to, ha to process and not just jumping from relationship to relationship. Mm -hmm. And now I think like, how did I ever do that without the time in between to process? So it's been, it's been great. I feel like I've become a better person to myself. I feel like I've started to love myself more and have now I enjoy time alone and I'm not a needy person who needs someone else in my life. I can contribute to someone else's life. And mm -hmm. it's like a really cool process. I feel like I don't want to give you unsolicited advice for sure, but I feel like you're really early on. And of course, everyone's journey is different, right? So I'm not going to sit here and tell you like, you should be doing this. But for me, it was like <laughs> such a good thing to be alone and to process my loneliness it just turned I feel like it turned me into a better person and I've talked to you through a bunch of it like our friendship some new but I feel like it got kind of like it got beyond surface level pretty fast I feel like we've had conversations yeah, after we did. had sex for sure it really you know so usually for me that ends the relationship but with you it just <laughs> no um no, like we started talking about real stuff right away. I like that. Like the oversharing was good. And I, I feel like I, I like talked to you a decent amount when you were like, like there was time where you were just like, what the fuck? Like, why is someone ghost? Like, why did I get stood up? And I'm like, I have no, I would never stand you. These people are insane. Um, but I feel like I got a little glimpse into that stuff. Um, and then, so like hearing you be happy is like extra amazing. Um, because yeah, like I, it's not like you're like, oh, I was in a relationship that I wasn't. And then I just like chilled out and then the perfect person came along and I'm happy again. I'm like, no, like I kind of got to see the roller coaster um, of what it takes to like find someone you like. And it's like, I might be on that roller coaster forever. I might just find like 10 pit bulls I like and not talk to dudes anymore because dudes are pretty frustrating. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, and I, and, you know, I'm just dating someone early now and I'm, there's no like putting all my eggs in one basket mm -hmm. anymore. There's like, Hey, I want to develop a friendship. Mm -hmm. What does, you know, it, can we do something romantic with this? It's, it's a, a little bit more stable <laughs> yeah. now. And I think at my age, I hate saying things like that because I 28? think, 28? I think yeah, 28, mm -hmm. I think things can, uh, like psychological things can apply across the board, but it just depends on where you are on the journey. Right. But mm -hmm. I think right now, the person I am, I need to be friends with someone first. I need a best friend. 
and then you know whatever else comes with that is great but um it's different for me now i just don't want to like jump into like a hot and heavy interaction with someone except for with you <laughs> i was gonna say that's where we're different um no i yeah but i'm like a little earlier on in this thing where i'm just like whatever i just I just keep doing stuff and meeting people and I'm just like, eventually you just click with someone. And if not, I'm like really doing a lot more stuff. Like I was like, I, I just, I feel like I've been single for five years for how many, like just people I've met and just not, not just guys. Like I was like, I just am out a lot more and like more friendly at the table. I'm not worried. Like if someone asked me to dinner break, I go. Whereas before I'd be like, Oh, I'm in a relationship. Like, I don't know if this person's trying to be friends with me or they're trying to date me, but I have to just tell them right. no that kind of thing. I'm like, I'm not doing that. And I, I just feel like I'm open to more people, even if I'm not attracted to them, just being like, oh yeah, I'll spend an hour. Like, sure. Like, why not? And that has been really good and a little exhausting, but I do look back and like, I've done a lot of cool things in the last few months that like, I, that was the point, you know, I was like, I'm kind of sitting around a lot and I don't want to be doing that. And then I really have taken it the other way or I'm just like, I'm like any fun thing. I'm like, sure. Fun thing. I'll go. And I don't know. It's like, that's what life's all about. So. I also feel like my prerequisites for what I expect out of a relationship is so different. Like I don't want to marry anyone anymore and I don't want to like live with someone. I just want to have like a really good friend that's monogamous with me. <laughs> you know, like I just, I really love my own space, you know? Yeah. And I, I, I don't know. It's so different now. I remember like when I was in my twenties, my parents were like, you need to get married. You need to have kids. You need to do this. And now like this, that's all gone. Like you're fucking old now. No one fucking wants you. And I'm like, great, great. Yeah, now I can travel and not, and, and not need someone or not feel like I need mm -hmm. to have someone. And now I don't have to marry someone. I, I think the whole marriage thing's stupid anyway, but High five. I feel like, um, yeah. <laughs> Especially yeah, not needing, like, not needing That's something is a market. Yeah. Sorry? I was just going to say not needing something is like a really approach it. Like being happy, being fulfilled, having good friendships, things that won't like dissolve, like, th you know, things that are like more stable um, leads you to like not needing things. And then it's just like if someone really adds to your life and you add to you hang out. And then it also like you don't put pressure on that. Like maybe this is someone who like adds to your life for a month and then they want to get married and you don't. Like you, they want to go like date someone seriously and you don't. Like that kind of thing too. I'm just like more open to that and not being like defined things and what is like what are we trying to do here? It's like that shouldn't that I don't know. That's like a bad way to approach things because then you kind of like shut some people out that maybe they were would have just been like this fun awesome friend or something. And I don't know. So I don't know. I, I want to <laughs> I kind of want to pick your brain about something because there's like um, a lot of you that I admire and um, I think a lot of people could uh, learn something from, you know, the way the way you've chosen to um, create your life. And um, for people who don't know you, you, you did go to law school and you wrote the bar and I think you were a lawyer for a short period of time. Three years. And then you decided three years. So you decided mm -hmm. that you didn't want to practice law anymore. And I feel like a lot of people will go through life and feel pressured to get married, go to college, go to medical school, go to law school, mm -hmm. fucking predictive analytics, whatever they want to do or whatever they feel they need to do. And they're chasing something that eventually leads to not being fulfilled because mm -hmm. it, it isn't true to what they really want to do. And the fact that you, you know, left law and didn't continue for the next 30 years miserably. You decided to leave and you went and um, tried to do what you what your heart desired. And I really admire that in you. And can you tell me what that process was like and what your outlook is when you're in that process? Sure, it was kind of swingy. One, one favor I did myself was to not do it impulsively. Um, like I was pretty unhappy as a lawyer for pretty much the whole time. Um, but I was like, man, I really, I sunk 150K into student loans. I sunk three years into my life. Uh, the bar was not easy. Law school, the first year of law school was like one of the most miserable years of my life. Um, so just like giving that old self, what like giving it its due, which is like you worked really hard, you spent a lot of money, make sure you're not doing something impulsive and throwing it away. Make sure you really wanna do this. So. Every day I was like, I might quit today, <laughs> like for a really long time. Um, and I feel like that was something that I'm very happy about. It's like kind of a similar thing to like breaking up from a relationship is like, don't do it impulsively. Like make sure this isn't just a one day where you're like, oh my God, everything's terrible. I got to get out. It's like, make sure that on average, you really want to do this. Like your average day would be better if you got out. Like, so that's what I was doing with law. 
like getting out of that was hard because it's like you, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure from my family because um, they were really proud of me. And like my parents are both uh, middle school teachers who thought it was so badass that I was going to be a lawyer and that, oh, you make so much money you're doing better than we did. And this like the dream for your kids and whatever. Um, that was hard to just be like, I'm not between jobs. I am done with this job. Like I'm I'm playing poker and I thought there was a reasonable chance I'd fail at poker. And for a while I did. And like very recently, like the swings are crazy. Um, and just trying to like stay focused and be like intentionally doing this, not just being like, I'm lazy. I don't want to get a job. Like to be like, I'm intentionally playing poker and I'm staying in this and defending yourself when you go to Thanksgiving and your family's like still gambling, <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, that was not easy. Um, and then to make matters worse, just being like, yeah, I don't think I want to get married and I'm not sure about kids and stuff like that. So I'm like, hey, I'm just a weirdo. But I was a, from a family of four kids. I'm like, you got three normal ones. You did great. 75% is really good. Like, don't worry. I'm just, I'm a black sheep. It's all right. Um, that was hard to just have a bunch of like feeling a little bit like of societal pressure and family pressure to kind of like conform to things that I didn't want to do that didn't feel right in my heart. Um, and actually like moving on from the law thing made it a little easier to feel when something didn't feel right again and just be like in relationships and in other jobs and things to just be like, okay, I recognize this feeling of like not being my authentic self at all, feeling like uh, like this like stress and anxiety um, and knowing that you have to kind of like move on from something, even if it was like comfortable and happy and whatever. Um, so that's the process for me. I also have like had some massive swings, like emotionally, um, financially, everything where like, I think some people, it's not for them. If they have a family, if they have other people depending on them, um, if they don't have the support system, like as much as I just trash talk my family for not being like supportive in that way, they're never letting me live on the street. Like my my worst case scenario is a lot better than a lot of people's. And I understand people not being able to throw away comfort um, financially, especially if they don't have that, like, yeah, sure, move back into my house. Like I had that. So it's like, I was playing the game on easy mode, sort of. But so I'm curious how you came to prioritizing your fulfillment because it took me till about five years ago to find that or maybe yeah maybe even less than that so where what was that process how did you find that so early I think the extreme nature of the legal career uh helped me get to it a little faster because like some people just are like yeah, this job's not that fulfilling, but I'm only here nine to five and I have a full life and I have a wife or a husband and dogs and family and whatever. Like that, that's not how it works. Like I, I was like getting up at 530 in the morning, just to have time to go running for half an hour. That was the only thing I did for my day. And like, you have to build hours. There's a like constant stress. I was, I had to wear a mouth guard to bed. I was grinding my teeth. I felt stress. I had a lot of bosses, like I had multiple partners I work for. And I was at a chill firm. I was at a firm people might even call a lifestyle firm. <laughs> like, so, you know, I'm not working 90 hours a week. Like I, uh, that accelerated my having to be introspective and having to be like, is this what I want for my life? Is money this important to me? And no, it's clearly not like it never has been. Um, and I, I think that that like led to me thinking about it way faster and way younger than if I had had a job that was just okay that like let me live my life a little more. Yeah, yeah. I finally am in a position where I feel like I love my job. I love my my life and I'm, I'm fulfilled. And I would rather stock shelves at Walmart for less money mm -hmm. if it means, you know, me feeling happier. So I, I definitely get the, you know, prioritizing your fulfillment. Yeah, I think it's really cool that you've gotten into poker more too. Cause like, I was like, oh, Veronica, like, she's really cool. She has her real job though, and like dabbles in like poker YouTube stuff, or whatever. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, when clearly I got to know you better at before this happened, but then the poker after dark thing, I was like, so pumped for you. Cause I'm like, you are a voice that like we need, you're fun and you're like different. And it's, it's nice to have a person that's not like, 100% poker to be like in the poker world. And like, I think you're very much more accessible to normal people. Cause it's like, oh yeah, she also has a job and shit going on in her life. And she's like struggling with dating, doing whatever. You're not like a poker bot. Like, it's really cool that they recognize that at, at um, poker go and like picked you up for poker after dark. Well, let's hope they keep me when, you know, you never know it's, it's season by season, but um, I have to say that I've, I keep saying I've been given more opportunity than I deserve uh, with poker and uh, poker after dark and poker go has been great I, to me. So I reject that mostly. Okay. So not just the possible thing, like you, you deserve it. Like they are hiring the best person for the job. They're trying to get the most people to watch. So like if you have the job and you're keeping the job, you deserve it. Um, but then also the possible thing, like you stuck your neck out super far 
I know it's been talked about like ad nauseum at this point, but I don't care. I'm talking about it again. That's really uncomfortable to do when you have your little community and your friends around you and you have to like tell them, hey, I'm going to do this thing that's going to make you guys all uncomfortable. I'm going to call out this person that you all like, that you've had dinner with, that you like that can't be fun. Also, you were like a minor celebrity at Stones and like you would get in the commentary booth and that was like your one into poker at that point. Like that's a place where you're comfortable and you made yourself extremely uncomfortable and you called out people that like were going to clearly not like you anymore. Um, that's a really big deal. It takes a lot of balls and you deserve opportunities coming from that. Like when people realize that you did a really good thing for the poker community, like you do deserve this and I'm not letting you Thanks, say it. Thanks, Jamie. I mm -hmm. appreciate that. Did someone say minor celebrity? Cool. You guys are having I way think... too intense a conversation for me to ever so, really so chime in. So Jamie's the biggest celebrity out of all of us, but you know, Brent did By commentary far. with me at Stones. We hated each other for the first hour and a half, and then the last 90 minutes we were something happened. What happened? Uh no, that's funny because we both said 90 minutes. It was that same thing. It was like very uncomfortable for an hour and a half. And then I think we started talking about taking a bath in butter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that it was started. like discomfort of like going down the birth canal. And then once we popped out, we were like, we're good. Let's, let's do this. Yeah. I don't know why I just, it was really <laughs> so awkward. Yeah, we were both born was... together. We're basically <laughs> twins. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is what Veronica would look like if she was a, a guy. Wow. hundred <laughs> percent without, without the extensions wow. and eyelashes and boob job. Tell if that was a good or I'm bad exactly one. like Brent. <laughs> Oh, yeah. By the way, Jamie, congratulations on the WSOP gig. I know I Thank said you. it on Twitter, but I don't think I've said Thank it in you. person yet. So I appreciate awesome. you. I'm super excited. And I've been like preparing. It, this is so fun to know ahead of time now, because last time I had no time and I was like, oh, man, I was like, if I knew I was getting this job, I would have gotten good at poker real quick. <laughs> I was like, fuck. Right. So, ta so talk to talk to us about <laughs> the preparation now. Okay, um, I don't think he would mind me saying it, but I hit up Ape Styles, um, Jonathan Van Fleet. He was on my pod like I don't know, three or four months ago. Um, and just, I like vibed super well with him. He's a really good, he's good at explaining things. He's not full of himself. He's not like a super, super promote myself kind of person. Um, and he offered me like a pretty reasonable hourly rate and he's like been super helpful. And I've never had like direct coaching like that. I've been in little groups and stuff where like Jesse Sylvia had a little backing stable um, and, and it was like group coaching mostly, which was like really cool. But I've never had a thing where I could be like, this is specifically what I think I suck at the most. Um, can we go through some stuff? Can you like tailor your coaching to me? Um, he's been really great. I, I'm, I'm a very big fan. Um, so oh, if you guys don't know him, uh, he, he streams a lot on Twitch. Um, I think it's like at Ape Styles Poker. Uh, but that has been cool. And it's also just like gotten my focus. Like if I just even do an hour a week, it's getting me to think about poker more. Cause like when I'm playing, I'm like, Ooh, I should tag a couple of these hands. Like, so I'm like more and in, more intentional when I'm playing. That's one of my biggest issues is like when I am grinding, I'm kind of like, ah, oh, like I'll watch some TV I'm on Twitter. I'm doing whatever. And this one, like just even knowing I'm going to be talking to someone about some hands has made me focus a lot more. Um, and it's been going well, but yeah, nothing super intense. I'm not like the, I can't pretend to be like the elite players who are like going through Sims all day long. I'm not that, but it has like, this job has made me um, more motivated to make sure that like, when I'm talking about poker, I'm not going to be like on level 20 talking to the casual fan. I just want to make sure I'm like doing a service to the players who are are playing and, and for millions of dollars that I'm saying the right thing. Like, even if it's right. Surface right. Level, and yeah. we want we Lon want McCarran to be able to understand what you're saying too. <laughs> It's cute. I, I'm a fan of <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Like he he is serving I'm just trying to make a cute joke to be honest. I know. Even and though Lon serving... and I have had some I know. He he serves his purpose well. Like he's a huge poker enthusiast who has a booming, amazing yes. voice who can make everything every event sound big and exciting and important. Um and yeah, I just want to make sure that like I can compliment Lon and Norm, but also like not not say they're like it's when someone's playing at a table and they make some crazy play that looks insane to me and i'm like oh my god what is this guy doing it's like it would be nice to know like oh the sims kind of like this play like this is something you can do low low frequency and like not yeah i don't know like i want to just like respect the game i guess it's like a cheesy way of saying it but like that is why i'm putting time in i want people to know that like i care about this job and i want to make the community look good and i want to be like knowledgeable if i'm in the analyst role 
Yeah, and I think that there, uh, with every major sport, and I do think this is considered a sport, we do want the, <clears throat> we want people who understand the the dynamics of the game, and we want some analytical breakdown, not to the point where we can't understand it, but um, we do want that breakdown. I don't think poker's looked at anymore like it used to in 2006 or 2003 when Lon and, and Norman first started. Like it was just super entertaining and. Um, we all thought more of luck in those days, mm -hmm. at least from my perspective. And so now, now we understand it's a game of mathematics and of, you know, probabilities. So mm -hmm. it's nice to have a more analytical thinking person on the commentary team for sure. Do you, do you feel, do you feel nervous when you're doing it at all? <laughs> yeah, especially that came from like imposter syndrome though. Like I got put in the booth and I was like, oh my God, there's like thousands of players that are better at poker than me. And, and I'm in this spot. And like, thankfully I have good friends and thankfully like I do have some self-confidence in like certain areas where I'm like, okay, like I'm, I'm good at the banter part. I'm like, if you put me in with the, like, I, I like being put in the booth with random people I don't know um, and finding ways to like communicate with them and like joke around with them. And I feel like that's the strength I have. I was good with that part. When I'm putting the analyst role, it is really hard for me because I'm just like, I'm very aware of like how many people would be better at breaking down hands um, and how many people would just listen to me and be like, man, that's like super ABC, what she's talking about and whatever. Um, and I've had just good conversations with like people at PokerGo and stuff where they're like, that is why you have this role. Like you're talking to normal people. You're not talking to like Dan Smith. Right not Seaver about poker you're not trying to like you're trying to break down like oh I think this is what this guy's thinking here but like you know poker's complex um I just for my own like it, it bothered me that I felt a little lost a few times you know that was the thing where I was like I'm okay with other people feeling like oh other someone else would have been better in that role I'm not okay with me feeling that way like well, when I'm well, with discomfort I think discomfort brings like an incredible amount of growth because like mm -hmm. instead of running away from that discomfort and feeling lost you approach it and then and then learn to do better next time. I feel the same way at Poker After Dark. I'm like, there are a hundred more people, a uh, hundred other people who could do this better than me, but why the fuck am I here? And I I feel the same way at times. And then I look at my the questions that I've asked people. I'm like, God, that was the stupidest question ever. <laughs> but whatever, I don't care. Like, what can you do? Um, so it's all live. Like, you know, I'm doing eight days straight of live coverage coverage and there are like one or two hands went back and watched and I'm like oh my god like I'm just wrong like I was like I was like oh, I think this card's better for this guy's range and as soon as I'm saying it I'm like no it's not and it's like but it's live and you have but five seconds know to that. say something no but I just want to like I just don't want to disrespect the players who are playing that that is my main thing I was like I want to make sure I put myself in a spot where I can do my best and I'm trying hard and you know I'm gonna make mistakes I'm we cover like 1200 hands or something like some of them are gonna not be great um, I just want to like make sure I work as hard as I can to make sure like fewest mistakes possible, respect the game, whatever. I'm still going to like the thing I'm hired for is just make fun of Norm. And I'm like, this is a great way to get a job. Like just get in the and, like trash this dude the whole time. Like I can do that. I've been doing this my whole life. <laughs> uh, yeah. The, the analytical breakdown of Norm <laughs> just giving him shit. Um, yeah. So uh you know, in 2020, Daniel Negrano kind of fucked with you during the World Series of Poker commentary. So now in your face, Daniel <laughs> D. Negs, in your face. I like him, but, you know, I got to do it. I got to do it. I well, don't think about him now, at all. It's pretty nice. Look, I don't believe in karma, but like, uh, what now was how are you feeling about that? I don't think about him. It's really nice. It's like a this this had come up because like Lapin obviously like hates Negroni super hard. And he's like, Oh, he wrote an article and he's like, How do you he's like, what do you think of this article? I'm like, Can you take out the Negroni stuff? Like I would like this to just not be about him at all. Like we don't like each other. It's, it's very clear and I'm okay with that. Like I like most people. I am like as much as I sound like this like nihilist, like anti, you know, what whatever. I'm I really do like most people. I get along with most people. I don't get along with him and I'm okay with that. Like <laughs> It's okay that he's like the most famous person in poker and all these people are like, my favorite poker player is in Grani. I'm like, mine's not. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> AKA, in your face, Negroni. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is so ironic. 2020, he's talking shit, trying to get her off uh, commentary. 2021, CBS Sports. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> but it does. Like, I, I do think he has been... He's good for my life in one way in that, like, I agreed with some of the stuff he said, you know, like, I'm not.
not like when someone is that harsh, super harsh, he's an asshole. Um, but a couple of things he said, there are better players you could put in that spot and like, like making sure that that way this time, like making sure that, that I'm doing the best job. And that does come from, from some people being assholes. I am motivated by state. Like, I have, um, and I am motivated by like, like breaking down why it felt so bad. He was like making asshole, like breaking that down was like interesting over weeks i had said one thing and i let it go and then anytime something me up in his like youtube or whatever he would have more stuff to say and i was like i'm done with this like you're a millionaire with a hot wife and like cute dogs and a house and everything going through maybe <laughs> maybe well, you should let it go like there's something to be know. said about there's no such thing as bad press right i like, don't know i'm not i'm not into that, I'm, like welcoming it into my life I am, though like i, I don't I'm not like you can tell I'm not. I like I don't, don't. Care. like I. There were people who did like troll me for a little while because they that he was their favorite player and stuff. And I'm just like, dude, I don't want to fight people. I really like. I have spent a lot of time. To, no, like you're Look, you're giving Jamie, me the whole. I, there's stuff I don't post on Twitter because I'm like, no, I don't really have. I want to. I don't want to fights all day. This isn't I'm, worth it. I'm well aware. After I invited you on my podcast to roast a cripple and you wouldn't, I was well <laughs> oh aware. God. <laughs> that you wouldn't you're not this person you yeah know? i'm not above it no i i'm 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 okay with negative shit being said about me like it doesn't fucking bother me and i'm just like you know what you're just giving me followers that's all you're doing anytime someone fucking shit posts me go mm -hmm. ahead but like how much worse are you gonna make my life you're not i'm fucking crushing life yeah go ahead i just feel a little sorry as i say I just, I don't know. There's like something about, I just don't like welcoming negativity. I'm like, it's part of life. Like when I commentate, there's going to be someone where I am their least favorite commentator and everything I say, they're going to be like, oh, I hate this girl. Her voice, her, oh, it's so annoying. Like, that's just natural. That's going to happen. Um, I'm just trying not to welcome more of that because it's like, what's the point? Like, I'm not adding anything to people's lives like by okay. being like, oh, let's get in the mix here and let's start fights and stuff. You know what? You're going to get to where I am at some point. You, the walking on eggshells on any in any discussion or anything you do is is like you're just going to be like, ah, I'm tired of it. Like, I, I just don't have the energy to care. We have different approaches. My thing is like when I f feel very strongly about something, you're going to hear about it. Like I, I'm going to be the chill person until something like what, when I snapped and just said the thing about Negreanu, I'm like, it had to be said. It was eating me up where he like had me removed from a broadcast the day before. I was like. I'm saying this. And I was like, I don't care what this does in my future career because I was like, someone, one person should not have so much power. They can unilaterally decide all this stuff, whatever. Um, and I said something and, and I was like, I hope that the fact that I'm not a squeaky wheel, like gives me some credibility when I'm like, no, I think this is a messed up situation. And here's why. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I care about and I'm willing to like put myself out there for it. There's just a lot of stuff where like, I think twice where I'll like write a, a tweet and I put it in my drafts and I'm like, do I want my day to revolve around this bullshit? No, I'm pretty busy. I don't want to do this. Or like, do I want to make this person feel really bad? for their terrible take no like maybe they're going through a breakup or something terrible like there there's just like a second filtering process that i feel like i have right now that maybe yeah maybe in a few years i won't maybe in a few years i'll be like tweet no. it out drafts don't exist like my drafts <laughs> folder is full of like 50 tweets i okay. i hear oh, that but i'm i'm a little more abrasive i get in fights with a lot of people online you see it <laughs> vanessa cade's my favorite fucking person right now so Oh wow! I didn't even. Oh, is there something going on now? I might. No, be no, no. We're we're done. We had our fight. She blocked me. We've had we've had some fights. She and I have had some fights. This is the thing, though. I'm like, my fights are in the DMs. Like, I'm a lady in the streets, you oh, know. No, no. In the DMs, I am not. You should see the but things. That like the one thing I hate when people what people do. Like, I don't post DM. I mean, okay. If someone, I will never like, do that. Yeah. If someone if someone like DMs me some like horrible shit and I don't know them and I haven't even interacted with them, I'll post yeah. that shit. But I, I will like my rule is if someone messages me and we get into a fight in our DMs, I don't post that shit or texting no. or any of that shit except Mike Possel. I posted Mike Possel's text that to me for good reason. I'm the same though. I'm like I want to have like an honest discussion with someone in DM. Like me and us, we got into it. We have we have some nasty DMs back and forth. Um, we're cool now. It's fine. Uh, and you know, I'm glad it wasn't in front of a bunch of people because then it becomes a thing where it's like, oh, now we both look like fools. People take sides. They, you know, it's like the not into it, but you know what? <laughs> I'm not I'm saying so I'll never be into it. <laughs> I'm not into, I don't care if someone thinks I look like a fool. I feel like if I stand up for what I think is correct. Mm -hmm. And if I, I'm going to call people out if I think yeah. they're full of shit. And I think like, 
Vanessa Cade during those times when we were fighting was full of shit. So, yeah. but anyway, Vanessa, Aaron, no hard feelings. All I'm saying, all you gotta say is like, I definitely have strong point viewpoints on some things. I just like pick my battles like very sparingly and you will see, I'm going to get into some fight. Like I do it sometimes, but most of the time I'm just like, I just want to get along with people. Like life is super hard. Um, I'm like very tired and I just like don't want to add more shit. Like that's how I feel right now. Maybe if I'm like super stable person one day, I'll be trying to get in the mix more, but like that is not me right now. So besides the World Series of Poker, what's what's going on with you? What's going on with your life? What are you what are you doing this next month before we start the series? Um, I got a job, which is super awesome. I never thought I'd be like celebrating getting a job because it used to be like, oh, I only play poker, po like poker I'm king media. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. Um, there's so much. You're the best. There's so much stuff in the works, and pretty much like the CEO of the company and the guy who owns the company are huge poker fans um, who are willing to put serious money into poker who want us to make cool shit. Thomas, Serious is Serious, and I um, are, he's the creative director and creative producer, um, partnered with WPT. We have a budget to make cool shit, and we're, there's a game show I'm going to get to make that I've wanted to make for, like, years. I had this idea, like, three years ago when I was working with Doug and like our stuff for Doug and YouTube was not like, yeah, put a million dollars behind it. We were like shoestring budget, make hit history videos, make people laugh, get a big audience. Cool. Um, so it's like any huge idea has had to be like backburnered kind of. And then with this company, they don't, they're just like, tell us your idea. If we like it, yeah, here's your budget, go make this happen, go get the best place. Here's a studio. Like it is so awesome. We are like, I sound like such a nerd, but I don't care. Like we're going to do so much good stuff for poker. Um, it's going to be out there. It's going to be accessible to people. We're going to get new people into the game hundred um, percent. And I'm just, if it's you, so you, cool you, to just be given like some leeway to actually like do things that I've been wanting to do for a long time. If you need a middle-aged woman dressed slutty to open up a briefcase, <laughs> let me know. I'll do it yes. for cheap. <laughs> for cheap. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so yeah. I'm cheap? No, I'm just. I'm not gonna. Do that. <laughs> you, think, you did, yeah, and cheap and easy. easy. You did the uh, the 25k heads up, right? It wasn't that yeah. Poker King. That was yeah. the first thing I worked on with them. Um, we brought a bunch of players to Cabo. We stayed at the Nobu Suites. I got to help plan all of it. Um, one of the coolest parts of it was that they were like, "Yeah, you want to do some commentary? Like, let's get some. Let's get this lineup filled up of commentary." And I'm like, I just get like the dream team of commentary. Like, I can just be like, I want to work with this person. Let's ask them. Let's let's incentivize them a little bit to do this. Um, I got to work with like everyone. It was amazing. Like, I I felt like I was getting coached the whole time. I got Kevin Ravishow in the booth, which is literally like I just shut up. I'm like, go on, make us all better at poker. Um, Dale and Devoras, uh, Olivier Bousquet, Dan Smith, uh, Doug Polk. We literally had like star-studded booth like i got to just sit there and ask these people and pick their brains and let just pick their brains and uh, joey ingram did it too just it was awesome um and phil ivy wins which is like surreal <laughs> like i was like what uh we had the phil ivy patrick antonius heads up battle at the end which was just like really interesting because of like how many new school crushers were in the field to for it to come down to them was like kind of cool um that event was like so exciting and it made me so happy. And I smuggled myself into Mexico with no passport and out with no passport. So I'm an international criminal now, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, How did but you yeah. do that? Because I have to go to Canada in like four Canada weeks and I don't have my passport. <laughs> Canada is a different story. Mexico is like, welcome, senorita. Like, come here and spend money. So, so I got invited to a wedding and I told, uh, the guy that I'm seeing, I was like, just put me in the trunk of your car. Seriously. Let's just do this. You're like squeaky clean. Like no one's yeah. going to check your car and then just put me in the trunk on the way back. This is actually an amazing test of the relationship too, to see what happens when the cops actually open the trunk and you're in there. Like, this is where I'm like, if I'm not really feeling the guy, I'd be like, I've been kidnapped. Help. <laughs> 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 or I could pretend like I've set up a little bed and I was taking a nap this because we're switching driving and like, <laughs> oh no, I didn't know we were going across the Canadian yeah, oh, wow. border. I asked this, you must have <laughs> forgot I was back. I don't know. Like, I, I think the whole thing is just like hella sketch. I don't think I'm, I don't know if I'll be able to get to Canada, but it's yeah. so crazy because I have a Canadian passport. I'm that Polish. I'm Can I have a Canadian passport, a Polish passport, and I'm waiting for my American passport because I just got my citizenship. <laughs> And that's uh, exciting. Yeah, and so now I can't go to fucking Canada. It's so weird. That is weird. Or I, I can go 
<clears throat> I can go to Canada with my Canadian passport and come try to come back, but they'll find me if they know that I went with my Canadian passport. Mm. It's like a five hundred dollar fine. There's a sneaky way to do it. I really hope I don't get in trouble for giving sneaky. But hypothetically, hypothetically. If you are going on what they call a closed loop cruise, which is leaving from the same port it will be returning to, hypothetically, if you're going from Canada to somewhere in the U.S. and then back to Canada, you could just get out in the U.S. and not get back on. I've heard. Ah. They require a license, in, not a passport. In many such cases. I've heard. I've heard, that, I've heard that's a thing you could do. I did so much research because, like, going to Cabo for that heads up thing, I was... I was slated to do so much work there. And it was the first thing I was doing for Poker King. And my passport was late. I still haven't gotten it. I wonder if there's a problem or something. Um, but I was like, oh my God, I was freaking out. So I'm like, this is a bad way to start with a company where you're just like, yeah, sorry. You need to fill in like 30 hours of commentary because I screwed up and I have my passport. Um, so I looked up every possible way to get into that country. <laughs> and I was not really worried about getting back to the US. I was like, whatever, I'll just live in Mexico for a while. I've done it before. Like when they shut down online poker, I lived in Rosarito. I'm like, I'll just go back. Um, but yeah, I've researched every method. So if you need help after this, we can Yeah, we can we'll, chat. we'll talk offline. <laughs> yeah. Brent, uh, can you bail me out of jail if ICE arrests me? Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> no. Desire is there. Ability probably isn't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You All right, well, good. I, I have my friends I can count on. Jamie? Uh, I can help you. I will do Yeah. We I wonder if you. there's any influencers that influence from prison. I mean, you know who can bail me out of jail? Johnny Vibes, for sure. Because definitely could. Day. Johnny Vibes well, drove, I, yeah, drove me into Mexico. Yeah, Johnny Vibes. Oh, Johnny wow, Vibes. I know we're not everybody. super close, but you can bail me out of jail. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not going to talk about it, but this is who took me, and this is where I was. Well, it's over with now. I feel like, uh, and also Johnny Vibes. What even is that? Is that a person? No, who knows? Like, that's not a real did you, name. Did you get imported to Mexico via the Matrix by by some guy? <laughs> yeah. That must have been what happened. Oh man. All right. Well, Jamie, thank you so much for joining us and um, taking some time out of your busy schedule. I know you're a mega superstar, so I appreciate you. I'm going to kill you. Um, <laughs> I'm not even being sarcastic. You're my most famous friend besides Jennifer Tilly. Jennifer Tilly likes all of my Instagram Jennifer photos. Jennifer Tilly fucking brag. rules. Uh, she is like life goals. I, she is so cool. She's one of the fucking coolest people I've ever met. Yeah. And I got to meet her and she's been following me on social media before um, Poker After Dark, but she she was playing on Poker After Dark this latest season. And I was trying so hard not to fangirl her, but I just like fucking admire the shit out of that woman. And she gives zero fucks. She wears what she wants. She's got a World Series of Poker bracelet. Uh, can I just say also that like poker really tried their best to like expel her. Like it, it was really annoying. Like she'd been on some shows when she was just a famous actress and she wasn't really like that much of a poker player yet. And so she played some hands poorly and all two plus two and all anyone would say is like, oh right. my God, what a fish, blah, blah. And her, her skin is so thick. She's so awesome. She's so self-confident that poker could not get rid of her. The Why do we do this to people is what I'm getting at here is like, can we please let people live? Like, like let people play because hands. it's a male dominated. Oh, it's like sport. frustrating. Um, but also it like has selected for like really strong women. Like that's, I'm like, I was like, wow, yeah. I have a lot of, really great female friends in poker. Why is this the case? Because it's like, besides sports, I feel like I hadn't really had a ton of female friends. And I'm like, oh, did like the strongest people who are like immune to bullshit. And it's like, I, I love these Kathy people. Kathy Liebert. Yeah. Kathy, Kathy Liebert has an incredible amount of longevity just doing yeah. her thing. I love her. I fucking, cool. she like says hi to me every year. Uh, the very first time I played the series, she was at my first table. And I fucking like, uh, like I worship her, but she doesn't know it. She's just like quiet, keeps to herself. I'm like, say it because I feel like she has gotten a lot of shit from people over the years, and like it would be nice to for someone to say, "Hey, I'm a fangirl of you," and like these people really have like paved the way for it to be a little bit better for us. Like that is definitely a thing, and like I really appreciate them. Plus, so just a side note, note. <laughs> I sat on a table with Kathy Liebert for like eight hours during uh, last ladies' event, and like she's so fucking good. She's mm -hmm. so fucking good at the game. It's unbelievable. It was just like palpable how much better she was than the rest of the table. But yeah. she got a few unlucky hands. So you've been yeah. around for a long time, man. Like you don't stick around losing money, you know? Like she's she's been doing well right. for a while. All right, Jamie, thank you so much. Brent, 
uh, we're doing, I'm doing a new thing on my channel. Brent and I have um, collided. Brent is uh, producing my show now, so I think it's really cool. So I have a producer, uh, plus he's a friend. Go. So, you know, we sort of get along. <laughs> So thanks, Brent. Uh, thank you, Jamie. And I'm um, looking forward to seeing you at the World Series of Poker. Ladies and gentlemen, I will send a link if you want to watch World Series of Poker. But it's going to be on CBS Sports this year. And you guys are going to be going live on CBS Sports, right? Yeah. So I might say something really dumb and cancel myself. Stay tuned. Perfect. Looking <laughs> forward to it. All right, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good day. Bye. Bye. <laughs>